begin. I want to welcome everyone to the session entitled Paradise by the Operations Dashboard. Our two speakers today are Dave Allman with the town of City of the town of Chapel Hill and Chase Bernard with the town of Chapel Hill. All right, take it away. Okay, uh, good morning. Um, so I'm Chase Bernard um, and I'm the GIS manager for the town of Chapel Hill. Uh, and with me is Dave Allman, who you'll hear from in a moment, um, who's our senior GIS analyst. So we're here today to give you an overview uh, of a project that we've been working on since last fall. The project grew out of a recognized need to provide better information to town staff to support day-to-day -day operations, as well as our ability to respond to and manage special circumstances like a severe weather event or a global pandemic. In addition, there is a long-standing desire, especially among our emergency managers, to have the ability to see the location and type of emergency calls, whether they be fire, EMS, uh, or law enforcement, in real time and in one location. So why a uh, dashboard solution? Well, there are a variety of reasons for this. One being that we had already done some internal development of uh, a dashboard solution. Uh, but to me, there are really three primary reasons or advantages to a dashboard. Uh, the first of those is uh, to pull together data from disparate sources to present the data in an easy to consume format that uses visualizations to make data more meaningful, and then to provide access to information for multiple internal users and in multiple scenarios. Um, what you see here is a, a dashboard, uh, which is to me a much cooler dashboard, but our dashboards are pretty cool. But in any case, if anybody recognizes that, if you wanna put in the chat uh, the uh, vehicle that that came from, then there'll be uh, internet points at the end of the presentation. So you can have fun with that. So the scope um, of this project, we really had two primary goals. One was uh, operations dashboard development. And then secondly, integration with the Orange County Computer Aided Dispatch or CAD system. We did initially consider creating an external dashboard as well, but that did not uh, fit with the requirements of the CARES Act funding that we received to do this project. So we focus exclusively on internal users. So how did this happen? Um, well, this is really an extremely fast tracked project, especially for, for local government. Uh, essentially, we secured funds via the CARES Act for the project in September of last fall. Uh, we received quotes for the project in October of uh, 2020 and ultimately contracted with Blue Raster um, to do the work. And then work began in early November and with the goal of completing the project by the end of the year. All right, uh, hey, at this point, go ahead, Dave. Dave's gonna uh, go into some of the detail of the actual work. Yeah, I just wanted to dive into some of the functional elements of the dashboard and some of the challenges we faced. Um, so the current, Emergency Operations Center status is shown uh, in the top left of our executive summary landing page on our dashboard. Uh, so it's one of the first things users see. Uh, we have enabled mobile activation of the EOC by allowing emergency managers to set the status of the EOC using Survey123. So Survey123 form submission triggers an Office 365 Power Automate Cloudflow uh, with simultaneous conditional flow logic based on the value in the requested departments field in the survey form. So all EOC staff are notified and then department and division directors are notified to send a representative to the EOC if their department is selected in the form by EOC manager. And some considerations uh, in Power Automate, uh, there's a lot of formatting functions for your push messages uh, to convert text, to format UTC date times, uh, and then structure the dynamic messaging configuration to format the survey fields in the alert message. Um, in survey one, two, three, uh, it's a lot easier to format those push messages by returning the survey labels instead of returning, returning the survey name uh, in the domain item. And to return the, the label, you have to use hidden fields in survey one, two, three, connect. Uh, you can use the junior choice name function to pull that label 
uh, or you can use the pull data function to access the labels in an external CSV file. Uh, and I just want to say sending an SMS or MMS message is really simple. You just add the 10 digit phone number plus the carrier MMS SMS URL to the recipients list. Uh, next slide. And so the next thing we did is we wanted to quantify the impact uh, on municipal services by events. So we also show you this in the executive summary section um, is the town services impact, which currently were impacted by COVID. Uh, and we're using two chart widgets and a list widget. Uh, and the service classifications are common across all of these three elements. Uh, they're mandatory, modified, reduced, or suspended services. Uh, in the pie chart, you can see the organization services summary impact. So just general statistics uh, on those four classifications. And then in the bar chart, you can see the department services impact summary, which is a more granular view of services by department. Um, and then the list widget shows services or classes as they are selected in either one of those charts. Uh, and that was done with the widget action configurations to control the filtering of selected records across the charts in the widget. Uh, we maintain this data as hosted tables to track the status of municipal services impacted by severe or extreme events. And as an event evolves, the charts can be updated by staff via web app builder. And so you can see special events. Uh, we did include special events summary widgets and data, um, but they're currently placeholders until we can complete the deployment of the special event permit solution suite from Esri. Uh, right now, our biggest hurdle is our solution requests from the permitting agency includes a fully integrated payment interface, uh, which just isn't available in Survey123 currently. Uh, we are exploring Integramat and Power Automate cloud flows to connect our PayFlow Pro account to address the payment issue and deploy the solution, hopefully within the next quarter, or at least the next year. Um, so if we move to the sunny skies dashboard, uh, we do have a robust visualization for dynamic traffic condition data. Uh, the Esri road closure solution has been deployed as part of our traffic divisions uh, road closure permit workflow for over a year now. Uh, and the configured solution allows us to participate in the Ways Connected Citizens program and access the Ways Alerts feature service. Uh, we also show road-related issues from Chapel Hill Connect, which is our public-facing C-Click fix implementation, and the NCDO TIMS feature service. <clears throat> and so these combined with the World Traffic Service from the Living Atlas, uh, we can provide current incident and network-based traffic and road condition data that can be used to inform public safety operations on several levels. And so sh we shift to the severe weather and uh, hurricanes dashboard. Uh, many of the authoritative weather forecast products and monitoring services, such as NOAA, the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, are basically plug and play feature services. Uh, but we did have some challenges working with precipitation accumulation data. We found that most of the data sources uh, for precipitation accumulation or raster services that can be visualized well on maps, but you can't uh, summarize the raster data in the widget, uh, as far as I know. Uh, there are authoritative tabular sources that, can, that update frequently, uh, but these require scheduled or scripted processing to maintain currency. We are exploring workarounds with the raster data. Uh, one working concept is to process the raster cells as point features, so we can then summarize the cell values in the widgets within our preferred aerial unit, and we can activate the widget conditional formatting options to improve the indicator capability in the dashboard. Um, and this solution will require model builder or some basic Python scripting to set the process as a scheduled task. <clears throat> Next slide. So in the winter weather road treatment section, uh, this was also a challenge because our current field to office workflow is a public works legacy. I think you all know what I mean there. Uh, it is multi-divisional, it's manual entry, it is paper and spreadsheet process, and we just have to modernize the, pretty much the entire operational data flow because it just doesn't support the level of service required by this EOC information product uh, for transportation data during extreme uh, winter weather events. And if you were here for Carmageddon a few years ago, you know just how quickly conditions can deteriorate on our transportation networks. Um, in this solution, we're working on uh, is really a configuration of field maps for ArcGIS and Web App Builder uh, 
that will let the public works managers and staff own and maintain their own data. Uh, so they have access to the data and analytic derivatives on demand rather than by request to the GIS division. Uh, and this approach is gonna reduce the planning window requirement for event response and totally eliminate latency in the operational field to office information cycle. So by, basically by enabling the equipment operators and crew supervisor, supervisors to capture their treatment activity logs and field maps for ArcGIS, we can eliminate the redundant data entry and aggregation, make the data immediately available in dashboards and support the level of service the ESC experience requires. <clears throat> so hold on to your seats for this one. Um, the default position for dashboard configuration for the COVID-19 section is to try to provide as much relevant data as possible to decision makers. Uh, but the challenging, the challenge, excuse me, of interpreting the division, diverse epidemiological and hospital data from disparate sources becomes really prohibitive. Um, working closely with the emergency management coordinator, we'll able to identify the data points that are relevant to public sa safety officials as indicators for EMS or ESC status changes or even action thresholds. At the top, you can see our internal data, the Chapel Hill data, it's primarily uh, PPE inventory for the town uh, related to the pandemic, as well as the uh, COVID-19 exposure to, by employees uh, summary data. Um, then we have the NCDHHS, NC COVID-19 feature service, uh, which we leveraged throughout this section. Uh, it was a great resource put out by the state. Um, so we have a Python scripted daily append operation to a hosted table so we can capture those daily uh, NC COVID-19 values and then show them over time as well as activate the conditional formatting in our indicator widgets. We did find that uh, relying on edit date and creation date index fields introduced issues uh, in our widget for uh, filtering when we updated the table schema and the field mapping in our Python script in response to changes to the NC COVID-19 feature service schema. Um, so our solution was to add our own effective date field that we can calculate in the script and if we need to manipulate later uh, and know that it won't be changed if we make wholesale updates to the hosted service. Um, and then the last part for this is the data provided by the county health department and the county emergency management department, it's primarily report-based and requires most of the manual data entry solutions that we implemented using survey one, two, three. And then uh, on the last slide here, uh, maybe it's a little hard to see, we did uh, add data dictionaries for all of our widgets. Uh, this recommendation came from an administrative work group, uh, essentially to provide definitions for the data points that help contextualize what they were seeing in the widgets and charts. Uh, on the last slide, there, you know, it said there was over 20 widgets. Uh, so we really just had to make a concerted effort to make sense of this without, uh, without making managers dive into a significant you know, literature review. Uh, so we can present the authoritative data sources, confirm that in the dashboard, and that confirmation really empowers the decision makers. Um, and this is just a, a rich text wi widget that includes data descriptions, the indicator interpretations, and any links to the source data where possible. Okay, thanks, Dave. Um, so I'm gonna um, come back to uh, uh, the second part of our, of our project, which was the uh, integration of, of CAD data with Orange County. So all police, fire, and EMS calls uh, for the town of Chapel Hill are dispatched through Orange County EMS. As I mentioned earlier, we have never had a way to view these calls spatially or otherwise in one central location. Likewise, fire EMS and law enforcement handle their calls differently and even use different unique identifiers for the same call. Orange County originally um, purchased uh, the SunGuard OSSI product as their CAD solution. And this was and several years ago. Years ago. And what we've, and what we've seen since then is then a consolidation, consolidation in this particular market. market. So, so OSSI, OSSI SunGuard, SunGuard became Superion, became Superion, became Central Square. Central Square. 
And as a result, as a result of this consolidation, this consolidation the, county the county CAD system, CAD system really only has partial support, partial support um, with limited um, integration, integration options. options. Um, um, it's a product that's product still, still uh, available and working, but working, it's but not, a, not uh, a focus of development, focus of development um, for the for this the, particular vendor. So when we started, so when the, we started the project, we went to we went to, essentially we went to the vendor, vendor and, and asked of means, of means to access, access the information, information um, either through um, an either API or backend or access, access uh, to the CAD database. And we were essentially told that that was not a supported solution. So given that that. Those approaches to integration were unavailable. We had to pursue another route. Dave, you've got mail. Is your mic on? So, is my mic on? Email. That email was already being provided. Essentially, being sent out by the by the dispatch to the various agencies. Um, um, fun fact, fun uh, fact of the day, uh, day this is uh, this actually 2021, 2021 is the 50th anniversary, anniversary um, um, of, email, of email and incidentally the 10th, 10th anniversary of this graphic this that I stole off the internet. Off. So email scraping. So the emails um, come in in a standard delimited format, which can then be parsed into records containing the relevant information, including location coordinates, incident type, type of service dispatched, whether it's fire, EMS, or law enforcement, and the specific units that are dispatched. In some cases, for example, with law enforcement, the coordinates are pre-located by dispatch and included in the email. Other calls will just include the street address that we geocode on our end. So in order to utilize the email-based information as the primary source for emergency calls, Blue Raster set up the following system. The first components you see operate in the Amazon or AWS cloud. The email is received by the SES or simple email service. It's then stored in an S3 bucket and finally processed in the Lambda. More on that processing in a minute. Ultimately, the information is published as an ArcGIS online feature service where it can be leveraged in various maps, apps, and specifically for our purposes, dashboards. So once the emails have been parsed and translated into records, we do some post-processing to prepare the data for publishing to ArcGIS Online. One of the primary challenges we faced was that often multiple email messages will be sent for a single call. These may include the initial dispatch call, updates, including additional services being added to the call, and ultimately a clear report indicating the call is no longer active. So code was written to process these multiple messages and consolidate them into one record when possible. In addition, we wanted to be able to classify calls based on severity. We were able to do this via a nature code lookup table where we designated specific call types as major incidents. So here we have another dashboard. Again, if you're a car nerd, feel free to guess the model of vehicle that this came from in the chat. So how does the published feature searcher work? Um, this operates within the Lambda. The Lambda's calls methods to the ArcGIS REST API to create and update features in the ArcGIS online feature service. The advantage of this is that it does not require uploading ArcGIS libraries to the Lambda and relies on open source Python libraries to do the work. All right, so here's where we end up with uh, Dashboard Paradise. Um, I've got a little video here that's kind of going through, it's gonna cycle through um, the dashboard uh, and, and essentially how we use it. We are very close to being operational with this um, and I expect that will take place uh, in, in the next few weeks. Um, however, as with most GIS projects, um, it's not all Paradise. Uh, we're still trying to find a way to close our law enforcement calls as this information is not currently sent out over dispatch like it is for fire and EMS. So when a law enforcement call comes in, it's gonna remain open um, until we either find a way to get the information to clear it, or perhaps we may set up a, a timeout function that'll just clear it out after a certain amount of time. But we're hopeful that we'll find a workable solution. But uh, in the meantime, uh, as the song says, two out of three ain't bad. So I'll leave this uh, slide up. That's essentially the end of the presentation. 
Um, we, uh, we can go ahead and take any questions that folks might have. It was a great presentation, uh, Dave and Chase. Um, we have a question here. Uh, is there more functionality and flexibility built into operations dashboard than there is dashboard layout and widgets that can be configured in Agol's web app builder? You want to answer uh, that? Yeah, I would say there is more. Uh, you know, there's there's limitations to both, I guess. Um, but really, the, unless you're making a, I like to use web app builder for targeted apps where you're just kind of you know, one trick ponies, whereas get into operations dashboard when you're really gonna have to get into the weeds for something like this. Um, and again, this is done in experience builder. So as you're building your dashboards, um, we were uh, blessed with the talents of Blue Raster to get all our dashboards in this uh, experience. Um, so the answer, short answer, yes, I think there's a little more functionality in the operations dashboard than there is in the dashboard style widget. Um, um, Carl Stern, Carl Stern says the first picture is a T-bird. That is correct. That is correct. 1955. Nice job. Yeah. Dave Michaels. He's a signed says, business card for that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. We have a message from Dave Michelson. Love the open source and Esri hybrid approach. Please send your questions in through the chat. Do you have any? So here's our uh, contact information that I'll put up here. Um, this is a real, uh, in terms of collaboration between the town uh, and Blue Raster, um, it's been an outstanding experience, at least from our standpoint. Um, we really um, brought really different brought strengths different to the strengths project, the project and, and relied on each other to each other work together and, together and, and come up with a solution in a very short time frame. Um, we ultimately were able to, uh, you know, the, the CARES Act deadline got pushed back as sometimes happens. So we, we weren't pencils down at the end of the year, uh, but we, uh, we were... 80% of the way there, um, you know, we were, we were operational at that point, but we've had a little more time to do some refinements and, and work on it. So um, that's been good. Well, if nobody guessed the, uh, the second dashboard I'm sure people are waiting with beta breath. That was a 57 Oldsmobile. Hmm. Would have never have guessed. That was a tough one. All right, doesn't look like any more questions. Well, thank you very much for attending um, and enjoy the rest of the conference.